Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That's... Hey everybody, what's happening? Willie here at the Great Outdoors, feeling pretty good. <sighs> Took a little while, but I feel pretty good. Also, I should be feeling pretty good. Today's Friday. Well, on normal circumstances, I'd be feeling great because today's Friday. But I've been on vacation for two weeks. Let's see, let's go back to my first week. Part one, first week of my vacation. I went to go camping. What happened? Truck broke down. That's right, truck broke down. Couldn't find a park for three days. I couldn't get anybody, anybody, that could tell me that the part I was buying was the actual part that should be on my truck. A wheel bearing has pretty much killed camping for the rest of my season. If you paid attention to the last video that I did, you'll probably notice I didn't sound too good. Well, I didn't sound good because I didn't feel good. Sinus infection and an inner ear infection. I was kind of wondering what was going on because every time I tried to stand up, it was like somebody was tilting the room on me. All on my fancy two weeks of vacation. And the weather immediately dropped off to where I started feeling better, but this morning when I got up, it was 36 degrees. Of course, it got warmer, but I couldn't take it any longer. I was feeling good, and I told my wife, Honey, I'm getting in the truck, and I'm leaving. She just went. I said, I'm coming back, and she went. But anyway, I did. I left. I put 200, almost 211 miles on the truck today. I went antique shopping, store looking, antiquing, thrifting, store, wherever. I went in anything that said thrift, antique, DAV, Goodwill. Well, I struggled. I thought I could find something, but I did find something, but it's giving me a fit already. Shakespeare, 1810. This one appears to be from the 70s. I've talked with my man, Dan Selvig. He kind of told me about the date codes on these things. And this one looks like it's probably from the 70s. And I'm going to tell you, that cap right there, that cap, it won't come off. No, it won't. No, it won't. Don't argue with me. I've tried. I've got blisters on the palms of both of my hands from trying to twist this thing off of there. It will not come off. And it's also locked up. Now, I don't want to try too hard because I'm afraid I'll mess the gears up. It is in good shape. It's just been sitting. Now, I really wish I would have taken a picture of where I found this. It's one of those places that you pass by a million times and it's never open. It's one of those places. Well, today it was. And then today I found out why it wasn't open or hadn't been open. Uh, seems that the owner had been shut down for several years uh, due to a death in the family and uh, the new owner, which is was part owner originally or whatever has gotten it back open again there were sheds and barns and all kinds of stuff and one of the sheds was strictly fishing stuff show me that shed that's what i wanted to see so i went in that shed it was incredible i should have took pictures and i apologize for not but there were vines growing through the walls and coming through it was set up really nice inside like it had been you know taken care of at some point but it had been locked up for five years which explains why this reel is locked up between the humidity here in virginia and the cold and the hot it explains why it's locked up now i'm going to do my very best to get this thing apart i don't know what that's going to entail but i can get the covers and the crank and stuff off and we can look at the gears to get this off uh a hammer was suggested, not in a humorous way either, a serious way. So I'm going to try what I can to get that cap off there. But first off, I'm going to take this apart so we can take a look at it and see exactly what we can do to make this thing function and work again, if we can. This thing is in really nice shape, considering that it was just sitting on a, a wall in a shed covered in spiders, spider webs, vines, and dust. Let's take this thing apart. I'm gonna take you guys down to the table here. Shakespeare 1810, model DK, uh, and I understand that the model, uh, the two digits that are out after the model, which this one and this one is D as in David, and K as in Kmart, um, stand for like 1971, 70, somewhere in there. 
So I did, to be honest with you, I had no idea they were still doing this style of reel in that time frame. But uh, that's what Dan the man says. I'm going with what Dan says. And Dan's also the one who told me to hit it with a hammer. So if I get ticked off and break it after the two weeks of vacation that I've saved up so long for, and if the week I've had, the weeks I've had, the time I've had, boy, the time we had. What a time we had. Anyway, let's get you down to the table here, and we'll take this thing apart and see uh, at least what internally it looks like, and then later on see if we can get this cap off of here. Show me what you got, 1810. Show me what you got. Okay, what I'm going to do is go in the kitchen and clean up what I can to get this grease out of here. And uh, then I'm going to make an attempt to try to get this cap off. I don't really know how I'm going to do it. Yep, I believe that is the problem. If you'll notice on this 1810, flush and flush. Somebody has cross-threaded. Sticking up, flat. So it is cross-threaded. So let's cross our fingers and hope that I can get it loose. I wasn't going to show this at first, but I just wanted y'all to see it. I'm trying to get the gear and the shaft out of the plate. And it, I don't know if you can tell how hard that is to come out of there. She was locked in there good. I've got the cap and the body soaking right now, but I just wanted you to see that. I'm going to show you something here real quick, um, and I'm hoping that it's not blurry. You can see that gear. We have a flat spot here where the teeth are not as tall as they should be. Teeth are tall as they should be. Teeth are not as tall as they should be. I don't know if you can see that when I spin it. Anyway, the reason for that is when these reels are locked, the gears are still engaged, okay? So if it's locked up, the grease is hardened and it's froze up and it won't turn, if you grab the crank and the reel and you try to force it to turn, you're basically smashing these gears. You, you have gears that are together like this and now you're forcing them to turn which means you rip them across each other one of the two gears is going to give in so what happens is one gear may stay like it's in good shape but as it rakes across the top of the other gear it takes the gear down to where you hardly have anything to grab onto that's what's happened here so Therefore, we have no gear, um, and that is the crank gear, the crank shaft. The crank would be on there like this. That is how the crank would be on there, and you would be turning it like so. So at this point, uh, talk with Dan. He's going to see if there's anything he has that may match that. See if we can get this thing back on the road again. Biggest problem we have right now is I still can't get the cap off and I have found out that it is cross-threaded. I think I've already stated that. They're very fine threads, okay? So you have to make sure when you screw that cap, here's how one is supposed to function. Okay, there's a very fine thread in there that allows you to be able to use this. And again, this is your drag. Okay, on the 1810, when you tighten that cap down, that is your drag. 
If you do not tighten the cap down correctly and it cross threads, cap goes on crooked, it doesn't seat all the way around the inside of the reel. I, I've got it lubricated up and I'm going to try my best to get those to break free and see if we can't fix the cap and the frame. Good morning everybody. Yes, it is morning. That's right. It is the next day. I am excited. I'm not joking. I'm excited. I've actually, my heart, I got you know, my surgery gloves on here because last night I took the reel out, set it upside down, and sprayed it down with some oil, some, I never can say it right, krill, crawl, krill, whatever, orange bottle, the oil that creeps, that's what they call it. Anyway, I took it this morning and I have a huge rubber mallet. I set it down on the floor and I took the reel and just started whacking the reel in a circle motion around on the mallet, not hitting the mallet on the reel, but taking the reel and hitting it on the mallet. And I heard something go pop. Look at there. Is that not the happiest thing you've ever seen in your life? The biggest problem I have is that I can't get the reel to release. Now that I've got it pretty much off, I can't get the pin to go in <laughs> to, get, uh, to get the cap off. Anyway, let me, let me work on that just a bit and I'll get back with you. I'm so happy. <laughs> there we go. Major breakthroughs. We got everything. Well, not everything. Everything's not apart. Okay. And the reason I'm not taking everything completely apart right now is because I don't have the gear to replace the crank, the crank gear. And I'm not going to disassemble all of this part of it and then forget how it goes back until I have a gear to put in the side and make this thing work. So unfortunately, this particular reel is gonna to have to be a part two. I'm thinking we'll be okay. I'm thinking I can get it back together straight. But as far as it goes, um, I'm gonna to have to look up a few things and make sure nothing's really missing from, from this scenario. <laughs> Cross your fingers that Dan has a gear that I can use for this. If not, I'm gonna to have to call around to some other vintage parts places and see if we can get some parts and uh this is this for for this summer this thing is going to be fun anyway i'm going to get dressed uh yeah we got 30 minutes before the place i want to go to opens up and we'll go see what they have and maybe we can come back and complete the other half of this video on a different reel but the shakespeare 1810 that was rescued from a shed in gloucester part two coming soon Anyway, let's get out. All right, we have made it. And we made it right at 10 o'clock. So they're open right now and there's barely anybody inside. So let's go in and do our thing. Let's get this angle right here. That's more better. Now you can see that I do have the top of my head and I'm not Frankenstein. Hey, am I pleasantly surprised? I am, I'm very, actually very happy. Um, it's 12.30, we left here about 9.30. Um, went to another antique store. Now I have literally exhausted just about I would say 97% of all the places that I normally go to find reels and stuff. And again, I'm not extremely happy with the prices that I'm finding on these things. Uh, I don't, like I said, I don't know if I'm the cause of this or if there's been some sudden surge in people buying um, vintage fishing equipment. I don't know, I really don't understand. 
because uh, for two or three years, you know, you could pick up stuff three, four, five, six, ten dollars. You still can at the flea market to an extent, but even the antique stores, they are acting like they have something that is uh, no one else has or whatever, and, and that's not the case. Um, I know, and if y'all know from watching me, you go to eBay, you find these things all day long, you can get them, but the problem is you're gonna pay shipping as well, so if you're paying shipping, then you're paying a lot more for the thing, you gotta really want it. So to find a decent one out here in the field, it ain't easy. Um, so anyway, I found a couple things. Let's go into the bag of tricks here. Now the first thing I'm gonna show you is that. All right, that is a Shakespeare that's clicky clacking. Though I'm not sure why. So anyway, obviously it's done the thing that it all, they all do. This uh, plastic, um, the crank handle piece, they rot off. Um, but this is a 1750 as opposed to the 1810 that we just got. I was really hoping that this gear inside here would work with the 1810, but it is a completely different beast inside. So, sadly, I got this paid a little more than I normally want. Hold on, let Speed Racer go by. Unfortunately, the piece of the foot is broke off, but According to Dan, these are aluminum, and I do have somebody who can weld aluminum, and I'm gonna see if maybe we can put something on there and extend that, and then I can take sandpaper and shape it and make a new foot for it and make this thing work again. Uh, of course, I'm gonna have to build some kind of crank handle, crank arm there. But uh, the gear, unfortunately, will not work inside. Internally, this is different than the 1810, even though they technically kind of function the same. So anyway, got that. Uh, the guy had $10 on it, but because the foot was broken, I got them to come down on it. I got them to come down to seven bucks, which is worth that to me. Um, so anyway, we're gonna, this is a future content right there, but I found one thing. This, this was in the same guy's booth, and I've been looking at it on several occasions, and he wanted too much money for it. <laughs> so him and I had a little discussion, and that discussion was, you know, I can find this reel all over the place, eBay, whatever, sometimes as low as five and six dollars. He said, well, you know, I've got the box and the paperwork and all that. Okay, again, let's talk about box and paperwork. That's great, that's wonderful. If you have something that nobody else has. Now, if you're just looking for a good looking box to sit on a shelf to display or something, and you're willing to pay silly money for a piece of cardboard from the 50s, Okay, that, that, that's, that's you, that's what you want to do, but you know, I use these things. And that's what I explained to the man, is that uh, I use them, I, I don't care if the box is there or not. I would even give him the box and say, here you go. And he's like, well, I don't want to split them up. Okay, well, I get that. I understand, I understand what you're saying, you don't want to do that. But I don't want to pay what he wanted to pay. He wanted $40 for this thing. And uh, I'll show you what it is real quick. I actually had never heard of it before. It is a Titan, and I have to see here. It's made in the U.S. It's made in something, New York. Utica, Utica, New York. And this is a model 1909. Model 1909. So yes, the paperwork is in there, or it wasn't there, it just fell out. And it's a nice little box and all of that. It does seem to function, it's a little tight, um, but everything seems to work. It's a very unique looking thing, but it's a Titan. I don't know if there's any other names to it. Let's see, H-I, who's H-I, or I-H? Who's I-H? Hi, hi, I'm not sure. Let's see here, my wife's loud, she talks loud. She's in the next room talking to Lucas, but yet I can still, she's loud. Now you know why I have to be so loud. <sighs> okay, Horrocks and I, Ibiston, Ibiston Company, Utica 2, New York. I, I have no idea. Um, spool contains 125 yards of nylon, eight pound test monofilament. It is the model A number 1909, Titan push button spin cast reel. Okay, I just read that off to you, but yet I'm gonna show it to you. So why did I do that? I don't know. Let's get this thing apart 
Um, clean it up, see if we can't get some line on it. It is a little stiff, but everything's working. Um, it's unique in its own way. This is, a, this is the drag, it has a drag on the side that you tighten upward. Um, it also has, uh, to get the cap off, you have a set screw that you tighten down and then you just spin the cap and it comes off. Uh, but we'll, we'll take this thing apart, it's pretty clean. Uh, but it's just a little stiff and I think that has a lot to do with grease and we're going to take a look at that. Maybe we can get some line on this thing, get it on a rod and get out to the water and give it a flanger 5 or 7 or 10 or 12. 14. 111. Anyway, let's get this thing apart. First thing I got to do is move the remnants of the 1810 out of the way. Come here remnants. I never did finish telling you though that I did get the man to come down because uh, he understood the box was of no use to me whatsoever. <laughs> and he said it had been there a while. So at least you got people like that that will work with you. That's really clean. Aluminum cap. This is very clean. It has had some line going across it. I can see that. Pin does come out. So it's operating like it should. It's just a little thick, but let's get this thing apart. Yeah, we got some old funky grease in there. Wow, this thing is weird. I have to figure out how to get it apart. I've never taken one of these apart before, so let's see. That does move pretty easy, but we're still going to clean that out. How in the world does that work? It's got like a two-piece spring-loaded thing to hold the spool on, but I've got to figure out. Oh, there's some washers. Okay, let's take those off so we don't lose that. Okay, washer goes in between the rotor on the shaft and the spool. Let's just set that in there for right now. How does that come apart? Oh, okay. It just pops down in that groove. Very cool. All right. That is a first. I've never seen one of those before. And there we go. Yep, we just got some funky grease in there. All right, when you pull the spool off, you have a gear on the bottom. And when you put it back on, you have this brass little clicker. If you spin it this way, it's not going to work. You have to put it back on, spin it counterclockwise to get it to seat back down again. Very cool. All right. Man, we are learning as we go here. This is just cool. Here's your drag. Here's your drag button. Let's just bring that down for right now. Has a little... What is that made of? Looks like it could be plastic or rubber or something. So I'm going to have to be careful with that. we got to get all that grease off of there. We're going to use this line to hold the screws since my... My bowl is being used up right at the moment with an 1810. It's always scary taking these things apart for the first time when you've never disassembled one and you're trying very hard to remember how it works, especially when it's a reel that really is not put together like anything else that you've dealt with. Now the thing I did like when I saw this reel was that these particular screws here, uh, they had no screwdriver marks on them. I like seeing that. I like seeing that they really haven't been disassembled and torn apart. Okay, that very well could be the original grease that came in this thing. So there's a C-clip. There's a C-clip on the bottom of the spring of the shaft right there. You pop that, I guarantee you that what's going to happen is that spring's going to come off and gear and everything will come out of there. Which I definitely am going to want to do because i got to get that old grease out of there. Okay, C-clip, got that. All right, now we're going to pull from the top. Yep, and that gear is going to slide right out, or the shaft's going to slide right out. There we go. Now we're going to take the spring out. Okay, there's the spring. We'll set that right there. And our gear... Our gear goes flat side, okay, see that? Flat side to the bottom. The gears look really good in this thing. They're not, they're not chewed up. Look really good. 
And this moves really easily, which tells me that it was the shaft that was all gummed up. So, see if this screwdriver will. Yeah, it will. Man, this reel's coming apart nicely. Really nicely. Can you see that? Do, 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 do. Wow, that's a, that's a long-winded device right there. We'll take our crank off here. Let's see if there's any, there's no bushings, no washers or anything. Let's see if we can pop that gear out of there. Let's just, uh, let's just go clean this thing up and see if I can, because I really don't want to break this. And I need to find out a little bit more information, but it's moving really easily. So uh, I can spray some good oil down in that thing and break all this stuff loose. But I'm going to go clean this part up really quick and then we'll clean up the other stuff. Hey, just for the record, I did want to show that uh, I got that gear out of there. And the only thing that was keeping it in there was a ridge of grease that would not allow it to, uh, to come out. So anyway, we got it out. There's a little copper washer that goes in between the gear and the base of the reel there. So anyway, uh, going to clean the inside of this out and that gear off. And then we're going to be ready to reassemble. Okay. We are going for the repair, the uh, put back together part of this process. about this reel as far as putting line on it um, one thing I do I got these little dock runner ugly sticks I use them for putting line on them just simply because they're so convenient in the house to be able to you know use in here and put line on and yes I'm still using my bass drum uh, to put the line on but one of the things I like about putting line on this particular reel I just thought I'd bring it up a lot of times with the uh, the Johnson's or the Abomatics or the, the uh, what else, Zebco's, whatever, it's very hard to get the cap off, take a look to see how much line you've got on it. And that, this one is so simple because it is a simple set screw right here. You make a, a barely make a turn and you can look inside and see how much line you're putting on. Then you just, I say, then you just slip it back on and set the screw and you go right back to putting line on again. Okay, we're out here. We're going to give it a shot now. We have had some freeze warnings in the last couple of nights. It's been, you know, in between 33 and 37 degrees in the mornings. So we may not catch anything, but at least we'll get to see what this thing can do. So that's my little disclaimer before I get to casting this thing and seeing what happens. We got the green funk all over the water again, but we're using a little Z-Man stubby worm there and I'm going to be using a 3.30 seconds jig to get out there a little further. I got six pound Bass Pro Shops XL on here and uh, let's just see what it does. See if all of our time and money was spent wisely. Okay, that's good. line comes off the reel really good really smooth and it's a really cool sound that it makes too you got one Not coming up either. But he did, and when he did, he let go of it. I should have let him stay down. 
It's not like you got to see the jump or anything. That wasn't a bad fish. And rod reel was doing good. It was actually a very comfortable retrieve and it was doing good. But it was just a real quick bump. It was bump. And then it was heavy and that was it. Decent fish too. He came up and jumped. I wish you could have seen it, but it's a decent fish. Don't jump. Please don't jump. Stay down there. Oh, that's a good fish. I'm really trying not to horse him, but I don't have a choice. Oh yeah. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> I know it's a silhouette, I'm sorry, but look at that. That's... Whew. The Titan was sitting in a display case in a box. Took it apart, cleaned it up. Big old bass, probably 17, 18 inches, maybe, maybe 19. About two pounds. Good fish. Oh. I'm gonna say it again, there ain't nothing like it. Fortunately, he got it caught right at the end of his mouth there. Another one of them big old goofy, skinny, big head fish. Can't get to the water. Other way. Whew. We're gonna try again, but if nothing happens at this point, I don't care. Welcome to the great outdoors. Whew. Let's talk about the reel real quick. Um, it did good, it did very good. I, I don't have a problem with this. It's very, it's very much like a Johnson Century or something like that. And even in some ways a little better. Um, man, that fish just destroyed this thing. It has a, uh, a few designs that are much different than a Johnson Century or a Citation, but it did fine, it did great. And I really don't even mind the goofy little flat button. I do see that the the little crank arms at some point, the little handle parts, I can see those popping off in your hand at some point. But drill it out, put a screw in there, make a new little handle and a little uh, nylon lock bolt on the end of it and you got another one. So let's try some more. This is a reel that I feel like I could use on any given day. Um, works very nice. I, I like it. I like it quite a bit. Oh yeah. I might have a good one here, folks. He is not wanting to expose himself. Oh, 
I don't think he's as nice as the last one, but a welcome nevertheless. Ooh, that just fell out. Oh my gosh, there's just no way to explain this. Y'all need to experience this for yourself. I mean, just an hour ago, this thing was in complete disarray on a table the table of contents that now is providing this my goodness I just can't I just whoo I just can't we need another picture Whoop, come back phone oh, thank you sir <laughs> I'll tell you something else I'm noticing about this one that I don't notice uh, or that I the other reels do basically when you set the hook and you get a good tight reel and pull on it the line on the other reels tends to get a little bit tight in the spool and when you go to cast the next time it wants to hang up where you set the hook this one's not doing that that's for why this is not one thing I'm noticing about the line though I'm using this Bass Pro Shops XL, it's like trying to set the hook with a bungee cord. I mean, you just pull and it's like you're pulling three feet or four feet further than you should really to set the hook. I mean, it's the line, it's got a lot of elasticity in it. That's right, I used a big word. So just in case I don't catch anything else, the Oryx Highbotson. What a name that is. Titan, model 1909. You find one out there somewhere and it's working somewhat decent, pick it up. I think you'll enjoy it. It's a fun reel. Very fun. It's very easy to work on. Not very technical. And functions really well. So thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. More to come on the 1810 when we get some repair parts. And hey guys, get outside, do some hiking, do some biking, do some camping, do some fishing, get into the great outdoors. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you on the next one, whatever the next one may be.